I want to get to our top five list this week. And the subject for our top five list is the top five coaches of all time in any sport. Chris has got his top five. I'm, I'm going to, we haven't compared notes. I'm, I don't have any idea who's on your list. But for me, number five, I'm going to start with Bud Wilkinson. Okay. Have you ever heard of him? Nope. Well, this is good. He was the um, head coach at Oklahoma for quite a long time, at least I think it was about 11 years. Um, in his first 10 years at Oklahoma, Bud Wilkinson's record was 107, eight losses, and two ties. He was there wow. as the coach from 47 to 63. Wow. He won eight big, it was back, back then, it was big eight championships. He won 14 of them. Including every single year from 47 to 59. They won their conference. That's pretty impressive. Then they came back after they won it in 59. They missed in 60s and 61. And they won it again in 62. So they won their conference under him 14 times. That's pretty amazing. Three national championships. And one thing I look at when I'm looking at a coach, especially in college football, is how do you do in bowl games? Because right. bowl games are like playoff games. He only went 6-2. and two. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, out of my top five coaches of all time, I went way off the board. To, a lot of our young listeners are going to be, like, Googling <laughs> Bud Wilkinson right now. But he was an amazing guy. He had an amazing 10-year stretch. He's at number five for me. Uh, my number five, I'm going to go with um, Newt Rockney from, uh, from Notre Dame. Uh, I'm looking at his record. His record, he was... Um, 105 and 12, which is which is really really good. He won. That's amazing. Exactly. He um, he won three national championships at Notre Dame, and um, to me that's that shows that even though they wasn't even they wasn't playing that many games, the fact that you went, you know, you have a win percentage that good, that's 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 amazing to me. <clears throat> All right, Newt Rockney is your number five. My yep. number four. Now. This one is a razor thin between two guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to tell you why I went with the guy I went with. I went with, at number four, greatest coaches of all time, mm -hmm. Urban Meyer. Really? I did. and But I I know what you're, a lot of listeners and, and watchers and viewers might be thinking right now is, well, what about Nick Saban? He's got more national championships, which is fine. It's a razor thin. It's not like I'm saying Urban Meyer blew him away. Mm -hmm. Razor thin margin. Here's the thing about Urban Meyer. His overall record is 187 and 32. That just by itself is impressive in college football today right. because you have so many huge teams. It's not like, for instance, back in the 30s right. when you had Navy, Army, Notre Dame, and maybe one other team that was Michigan. big. Right. You got a lot of teams out there, so it's super, super competitive. Here's this bowl record. In 15 bowl games, he's 12 and 3. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Three national championships. But this is why I think he beats out Nick Saban by a hair. He's won three Big Ten championships, two SEC championships, and two Mountain West championships. In, 19, in 2009, Sports Illustrated named him the coach of the decade. And besides that, before he was even at Utah, which was in the Mountain West at the time, mm -hmm. he was 17-6 at, at Bowling Green in the MAC. Right. He had two winning record seasons. One was, I don't know, uh, eight and three, and the other one was nine and three. I can't remember exactly wh which one was which. I think that was it. His first season was eight and three. His next season was nine and three. So he turned around and built a program substantially in the MAC, in the Mountain West. He won the SEC. He won SEC championships and national championships. He won Big Ten championships and national championships. And he's the SI Coach of the Year for the decade in in two thousand and nine. And he's twelve and three in bowl games. To me, he's done it. Now, you could say, well, you know, Nick Nick won at Alabama, but he also won at LSU, and he turned around Michigan State. Right, but go do it in the Mountain West and the MAC. Okay. So that right there just gives that little tiny notch that says Urban Meyer is my number four coach of all time. Motivator, solid guy. I think he actually got way too much flack from Florida people when he left Florida, but he's my number four coach of all time. My number four coach of all time, Bobby Bowden. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Bobby. Bobby. He's way down the list. So, 
I mean, but really, you have to look at look at Bobby's record. I mean, he's won over three hundred games. Yeah, turn around Florida turn, State. Turn, turn around Florida State. There was nothing before he, he was, got there. I mean, started as as a wide receiver coach. Came mm-hmm. from West Virginia, uh, and you know, I mean, just his tenure at Florida State. I, I mean, if you go back and you look at those Florida States from those eighties and nineties, I mean, he basically had this thing running for almost twenty years straight. So you look at the dominance that he had over that that tenure. Mm-hmm. You had twelve ACC championships. Two uh two national championships. All the years where he finished like ten years below uh, the top 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 ten. Top top, top five. five, right. Yeah, top five. Top five, right. You look at I mean, just even look at the players that, that came up under him that, that's going to the NFL that are Hall of Famers right now. Yeah. So when you look at that, I'm looking at Bobby Bowden, he's he's my number four court now coach. When we did our top five college football traditions, you had Osceola putting the spear in at the fifty yard line as your number one. And now you've got Bobby Bowden. Out of all the NBA, NFL, college football coaches, lacrosse, bowling, anything, you've got Bobby Bowden in your top five. So you're not worried about people possibly smelling a little bit of homerism coming from you? Mm, not, There's no not, home because you not, went to FSU. Not not really when they when they see the rest of my coaches. I mean Bobby the, Bowden in the top five, it, it's not even a little bit of a stretch. Mm, no. I mean you, you look at the history of, of what Bobby has has done for college football, what he's done over the yeah. span of college football, it's, it's no way he, he he can't be in somewhere in the top five. Okay, my number three all time. Now we're getting into like the really tight, tight zone. This is the upper echelon of coaches that have ever coached anywhere, anytime, ever. Number three for me is the Wizard of Westwood, John Wooden. That's a good one. The head coach of the UCLA basketball program throughout the 60s mainly. Um Listen to these statistics in his resume. First of all, let's just start with one of the most stand-up guys ever to coach. One of the top character individuals ever in coaching. He was just above reproach. Right. So that I love. It's such a recruiting magnet to be able to say John Wooden is going to be your head coach. Because he's he's going to care about your players on, and developing them as athletes, but he's also equally, if not more so, going to care about your your son or uh, coming into UCLA as a human being and an individual and helping develop that part of him, his character. Um, I told you I got to sit down with Bill Walton. I've got Bill Walton's book up here, and uh, I got to sit down with him over the holidays out in California when I was there, and I was asking him about the most influential people because he's come across everybody, Red Auerbach, Casey Jones, right. I mean, tons of people. And he he just, there was a theme throughout the day about sharing stories and things that had to do with John Wooden. Right. And the stories that I noticed had nothing to do with statistics. They were all human being, human connection stories about what a great character guy that this guy was. When his wife passed away, he was still writing love letters to, to her. And taking them to where she's buried. He had an incredible marriage. He was an incredible man of character. But here's here's his professional resume as a coach. Ten-time national championship in men's basketball. Right there, you're in the top five. Yeah. Ten times. Twelve times. He took the UCLA basketball team to the final four. Now, how many coaches can say that? Twelve appearances in the NCAA final four. Have you ever heard of the National Basketball League? It was here before the NBA. He played in that league. And in 1933, he was the scoring leader in the L- NBL, which is not a coaching thing. But I just think it's fascinating right. that he was at the top of his game playing as a scoring leader in 1933 in the NBA. L- NBL. Say that fast. Five-time coach of the year. Yeah. Five times. That, to me, is stellar. Five-time coach of the year. I actually took one of the quotes that Bill shared with me, and it's probably on the internet too, but this is a John Wooden quote that that really solidified the the fact that he should be one of my top five coaches. Be more concerned with your character than your reputation. I thought that that was amazing. Stand-up guy, 10 championships, five-time coach of the year. John Wooden, number three for me, all-time coaches. Hmm. One, number three, um... Is probably one of the one of the greatest coaches that that people have probably if you follow college football, you know him, you know about his record, you know about what he did for this institution, uh the institution of college football. My number three is Eddie Robinson. Mm, another uh, solid character guy. Right. 
Uh, Eddie Robinson was the coach of Grambling for over 40 years. He uh, he had, he knocks over 400 wins, <laughs> and uh, he he not also had nine black college national championships, nine. And on top of that, he also has won. He also won his conference 17 times. So when you and when, what's Grambling done since he left? Uh, well, they hired. Uh, they're not Doug, they nearly had Doug, uh, Doug Williams. Doug Williams, right? Uh, he kept they kept the program relevant somewhat, but you haven't really heard of in, heard of Grambling too much as far as on the national scene, right? Since since you know Eddie Robinson has left, but I mean to me he he was one of the greatest college coaches. But to me personally, I mean he, to me he is on the pantheon of, of being one of the greatest college coaches of all time. I I, I agree. I I think he's. Not only one of the top coaches in college football of all time, he was a stand-up character guy. Yeah. And we need more of that in, in college athletics. We need more of that in the world, just in general. My number two all-time coach of all time is Red Auerbach from the Boston Celtics. Now, this is not a homer call because this guy is established. First of all, he won, as a coach, he won nine NBA championships, including eight in a row. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. He was uh, 11 times he was named to be the all-star coach for the Eastern Conference. Here's the other things that a lot of people don't know about him that I respect about him a lot. He drafted the first black player in the NBA, Chuck Cooper, to play with the Celtics. But he also brought in uh, Casey Jones, Sam Jones. He, he, brought, he was integrating basketball at a time in the early 50s when... Baseball had just started that. He was the next tier of, of person. And in that town in Boston, a racially charged town. And then on top of that, not only did he do it first, and did he do it in such a hard town to do it in, but he did it and he won. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Not only did he do it as a coach, most of the years that they were winning, Nash, they were winning uh, NBA titles, he was also the GM. So he's putting together the team and he's coaching the team. He's integrating the team, which I, I love. He's also known in, in many NBA circles as the inventor of the fast break that started with Bob Cousy. Right. Little tiny short guy, and now what do we see? The same thing with Steve Nash. We see the same thing with Stephen Curry. You put you know a smaller guy at point and let him run that fast break. So he he's known as the, the father of the fast break. While he was with, in any capacity, with the, with the Celtics, they won 16 championships. Yep. That's pretty amazing to me. He, he turned into the full-time GM in 1986 and has 938 wins all time. So he did it on a social level. He coached. He GM'd. He was an innovator. And he's at the top. Of, as far as coaches goes, he has more champion. I, he has more wins than anybody else. But their franchise, which he's the father of, has more championships now, 17, than any other team. And if, to win eight in a row, yeah, I, I don't want to hear the stories about, well, back there in the NBA, they didn't have talent. Mm, well, that's no. stupid because they actually had more talent, I think. You can't compare awesome players in the 60s to awesome players in 2010. It doesn't work. You got to compare the greatest players in their era at their position. Red Arbach's my number two all-time coach ever, any sport. Um, My number two? Well... Stigma college football. Uh, <laughs> uh, Paul Bear Bryant from, from the University of Alabama. Really? No, yeah. did you consider Paul Brown at all? Was um, he in that? No? Yeah, well, I thought about him, but. Do you have an NFL coach on your list? Nope. Oh, wow. I'm gonna, this is going to be shocking to see who your number one is. So, Bear Bryant. How come Bear Bryant at two? Well, I look at look at Bear Bryant over, over his stretch. First off, he has six national championships. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, he's, you know, he started out, um, well, I mean, he won six national championships at Alabama in, in the SEC. He has, um, the most SEC championships out of any coach ever. And I mean, just looking at the, his body of work in college football and what he's meant to college football, he, he put him up there as the top college football in history of college football coach in history, um, uh, outside of Eddie Robinson to me. And what about Saban? Where would he be? Saban. Saban's um, got six, right? Five. Five? Yep. Are you counting LSU? Oh, right. That's right. That's right. He did have six. He does have six. So he's got but six in the SEC has, also. He has six in the SEC. But all how, how close is Saban 
Because um, back in the, 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 I would say in the 60s and the 70s, yeah, you had machines. They were just right. factories. Now, in college football, it's so much harder to recruit. Right. you got to be electronically tied in. And for guys that are Bear Bryant's right. age or Nick Saban mm-hmm. these days, to get tied in electronically and build those relationships in a yeah. completely different way, it's right. a lot more about keeping in track and keeping connected electronically than visiting the family in the house anymore, I think. Right. So how close do you have Nick Saban there? Because Nick, Nick wasn't even in your top five. Yeah, I know. He, he wasn't in my top five. I mean, I'm looking at – I'm looking at the body of work over over history. When I look mm-hmm. at Nick Saban, Nick Saban has been doing it for probably like what, maybe twenty years. 20 years. Yeah. I mean, you got to look. Bear Bryant, Bobby Bowden, mm-hmm. Eddie Robson. These guys did it for like 30, 40 years straight. Yeah. So when you're looking at that body of work mm-hmm. uh, over that span of time, oh, it's incredible. It's it's incredible. Yeah. And so that that's that was the the, the big difference in the knocks with with uh, selecting Bear Bryant over over Nick. Yeah, Saban. I'm not knocking that that too hard i just was wondering how far off it was my number one coach of all time any sport ever is bill belichick (laughs) it's bill bell and it's not a homer call either it's not a homer call we're talking first of all everything he's done has to be prefaced by saying 95 percent of it was done in a free agent market yeah so all the stuff that happened with chuck knoll and don coriel and you know, we could go back to Vince Lombardi and anybody who was winning in the, in the 70s and in, right. the, in the 60s, it was a completely different playing field. It is much harder in, in, when you have a salary cap mm-hmm. you have to work with. Right. Then you've got open free agency. And what the, he's done in the last 20 years, this is what he's done. He's been the head coach since 2000 at New England. But he was an assistant coach, defensive coordinator at several other places and right. the head coach at the Browns. And almost had Cleveland turned around for the first time ever. He yeah. almost did. I mean, that team was really good. And, and Nick Saban was on that team. He was also one of his assistants. But six-time Super Bowl champion as a head coach, three-time coach of the year. That just doesn't happen in the NFL. And there's probably other years he could have been head coach. Right. But that's a little bit of a he already has one. Let's give it to somebody who's an up-and-comer. Right. Three-time coach of the year. He has two Super Bowl championships as a coordinator with the Giants. So he has eight overall. Overall championships. His overall record in regular season is 300 and 135. That's a, almost a, a 700 winning percentage over 20 years in free agency and a salary cap. He's winning almost 70% of his games right. in, in over 20 years in the pros, the highest possible echelon of athletics. His postseason record is 31 and 11. Right. Again, in the playoffs over 20 years, he's almost hitting at a 700% clip in the playoffs. They've won 10 divisional championships in a row. 10. Teams don't get all geared up because they're playing against Tom Brady next week. They're thinking to themselves, the Patriots had a week off. What's Bill Belichick doing with two weeks that's going to take me apart? They're not thinking in the Super Bowl, how's Tom Brady going to take me apart? Nobody saw Edelman coming out having all those receptions last year in the Super Bowl against the Rams. And every Super Bowl, it's a di- you, you just plug in a different player. The constant is the coaching. The constant is Bill Belichick. And the real fear with the GMs and the coaches on the other side is, how is he going to scheme and take away what we do best? And even though they know it's going to happen, and they know wh- what – his methods are and his his techniques it happens every single year so bill belichick is my number one coach of all time well i mean you've already said my number one coach so i did was, yeah oh we actually have one on the list that's the same john wooden john wooden there you go yeah, yeah. so so there we go that's yeah. that's it <laughs> Yeah, John I, wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, you already discussed him, so I mean, I have <laughs> I, I have nothing else to say. I, mean. I know we don't talk about the <laughs> the uh, the list, so we try not to. Um, so we're totally I'm objective. Now, I th- I thought Bowden was a little bit of a stretch for top five all time, and Bear Bryant because there's a lot of people that you could plug in at college football, and you know, I, I'll even willing to admit Bud Wilkerson is a little bit of a stretch because there's right. just so many guys out there that are great. I could have unplugged him and plugged in Saban, right? And and I could have built an argument for that. Oh, first round.